Kokonar from Somerset and the Jim's Auto and Truck Stop Machine will be doing the honors with our national anthem. And at this time, we ask you all to please stand for the playing of our national anthem. <laughs> And thank you, Chris Kokonar. We hope you're under the hood from Brockers Machine Shop as opposed to the former V6 engine. Habanel takes the green and he's on the clock as he works in turns one and two. We'll get you an idea of just how fast this division completes the circuits around Motodrome because we have the fastest time of the year written down here. We'll talk about that in a minute, but the first lap for Habanel. It comes in at 18.13. Now, we've always time trialed in the dusk or evening hours so far this year. Usually in the afternoon, you're a little bit slower. As Havanel comes out of turn four for his second lap, and that is at 18.07. Keep this in mind, race fans. The fastest time turned all year is 17.038. I'm sorry, 17083 by Charlie Cragen back on June 5th. That's the fastest time so far this season. That's a 94.83 mile per hour average. Right now, Danny White's on the clock. His first lap, the champion Pennsylvania driver, comes down the front straightaway. 1754, a very good lap for Danny White. I would imagine somewhere in a 17273 bracket will be about quick time this afternoon. Oh, Danny White gets all crossed up a little squarely on this second lap. And this will definitely be off the pace. 18 flat, significantly slow. Now, the, as we turn our attention to turns three and four, Somerset, Pennsylvania's Alan Shawless and the Tom Shannon Oldsmobile exits out of four, and the first lap comes in. 1778, and Alan Shawless has been spending some time at the Precision Chassis Center with this Al Chassis machine. And he said he's been tickled pink in the last two weeks of how Rick and Dave Miller have been helping him out setting the car up, and it's shown significantly faster than he's been in past weeks. Slower the second time around at 18.04. Next to take to the electric eye is Wheeling, West Virginia's Gary Gellner and the Subway Sandwiches, 22. Gellner with this A1 engineering car recently purchased from Precision Chassis Center after running a Howl car earlier in the season that ended up in a very bad crash. He continues out of turn four on the first lap. Ah, good one for Gellner. 17.69 for Gary Gellner. So early in time trials, he's second fastest. A fast racing engine under the hood of that automobile. That is blueprinted, uh, assembled, and repaired by Tim Ice's wife, Yvette, at the uh, meal shop that makes the fast racing engines. 17.79, a bit slower the second time around for Gellner. Next to challenge the electric eye is Latrobe, Pennsylvania's Snooky Williams. Williams, who's been knocking on the door of a checkered flag. He's never had one on the pavement. Had two top five finishes last week in Western Pennsylvania, and of course, before the mishap with Bariani was running for the lead. So we'll be watching Williams up high out of three and four. This may slow his first lap effort. 
A respectable time despite a minor miscue, 1784, the snooker as he works down the back straight. Into turns three and four. This should be the quicker time, the better line through three and four, and the time is, it is race fans, 1759. And Working his first lap, gentlemen is involved with a minor miscue last night at Jennerstown. From Mars, Pennsylvania, it's Chuck Kennedy. His first lap comes in at 1765, and Chuck Kennedy now becomes the fifth fastest qualifier in our time trial sessions. Quick man is a 23 at Danny White. It's 1754. Let's see if Kennedy can improve on it. 17.55, he misses by one hundredth of a second. The quick time so far set by Danny White. That's Chuck Kennedy out of Mars, Pennsylvania with the second fast time right now. Taking the green, a gentleman who has captured a number of quick times, both at Motodrome and the Jennerstown Speedway this season. The winner last night at Jennerstown out of Connorsville, it's Rick Miller. Miller's first lap. Here it is, 17.41, quick time so far, race fans. Rick Miller with the A1 Engineering chassis. Hetchel and Sons Automotive, uh, Jim Dolan Chevrolet 19 hooked up and flying. 17.41 for Miller, let's see if he can improve on it. 17.43, a tick slower but consistent. Now I do believe this is charging Charlie Cragen behind the wheel of this Twin County Chevrolet dealer 42 machine. The X machine would be Bob Arsenberger. We'll watch Cragen as he goes on the clock. The Hopewell, Pennsylvania resident, which as uh, Joe mentions near Everett. By the way, Everett's near Bedford to give you a proximity. <laughs> you were not familiar where Everett's at. Cragen exits out of turn four near the outside retaining wall, using up as much track as possible. 1731 charging Charlie Cragen setting the fast time so far. Cragen with a quick time, a tenth of a second faster than Rick Miller. Will he improve on it? Here we go, down the front straight. 17.38, a bit slower the second time around. Most drivers taking an all-out shot on their first lap. Out on the racing service, straight from Flat Rock Speedway, Michigan, racing last night there from Doylestown. It's the Iceman, Tim Ice, with a first lap time of 17.51, and the Iceman positions himself as third fastest in the field so far. and the Iceman picks it up and he's now second fastest. Well, I'll tell you what, coming all the way from Michigan last night to here for an afternoon race, that's quite a haul. I don't know if Tim and his crew got much sleep, but it certainly hasn't slowed his reflexes down. Now the second Cragen car and behind the wheel down automobile qualifying it for him will be Rapid Robert Arsenberger from Mill Run, Pennsylvania. Casa Fire Equipment, Scanlon Clinic, sponsored automobile along with Twin County Chevrolet dealers. Out of turn four, the first lap with Arsenberger. 18-21, Rapid Robert just taking his time out there, putting it on the clock. Exiting out of turn four, and the Rapid one has the checker drop on. 17-93, so he picks it for Jock. Down the front straight, Jock Sutherland. Rick Jock at 17.56. Fifth right in there. I believe that's fifth passes. Yeah, okay. Here's the guy that has more fast times in Western Pennsylvania than anybody from Harbor to Hyde, American Title Trust, Buick Regal Body, Port City Chassis Machine, Glenn Galt. 
Called out of turn four. We'll be watching the first lap. 17.42, a good one. Glenn Gall with 1742 puts him at fourth fastest. Can he pick up a few more ticks of the clock and challenge the 1731 that Cragen has? Here he comes out of turn four and the checker drops. 1753, a bit slower the second time around. Now, a gentleman who has captured a fast time in motor drum in a 92 season, out of Connorsville. And a hard transmission, Camaro body, Ed Nicholson and Sun Lover, 77, Bobby Henry. Bobby finishing a close second last night to Rick Miller at Jennerstown. And as he works his first lap, we'll be looking to see if he can break 1731. First lap, 1755, certainly puts him in the thick of things. Let's see what he gets with the second lap into turn three and four. Bates up just a bit high, going into three very heavily. Picks it up at 17.47 for Worked most of the night after the crash at Jennerstown to get the rear end of this car back in place. And let's see if it pays off for the Storystown Auto Record 75 of Barry Audi from Jenner's, Pennsylvania. Audi, Port City chassis machine, aluminum body. 17.52, very respectable time. Puts Audi right into the thick of things. Can he pick up on it? Audi, in his high school days, was an undefeated wrestler and now changing over, giving up the bat for the driving gloves and turns us 17.42. So Barry Audi looking strong with the fourth fastest time so far. Taking the green in a brand new WRC chassis machine they debuted last night at the Jennerstown Speedway. It's the Martinelli Service 63 Malkut powered automobile from Aston, Ohio's Bob Sibla. Sibla on the first lap. 17.56, we'll watch his second one around. Down the back straightaway now. The change of colors, this is the traditional red automobile that Sibla has campaigned for so many years this paint scheme, and they've gone back to that. Second lap, 1753, he picks up on it and places himself right into the heat of things. And that concludes the Joya Winston Racing Series program. Side by side at the perpendicular yellow line in turn four. If they are, we go green and we'll race. Here we go, out of turn four, the green flag's unfolded. We're up to speed in racing. Into turns one and two, Butch Turkus jumps right to the lead, and the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania driver down the back straight. Here comes Dave Hoff, off in the AJ's Furniture 20, moving quickly up to the second place position. Sets his sights on Durkus Automobile. Look at this in the back of the pack. Up high, meanwhile, the battle for the lead, and Hoff wastes no time for the first position. Down the back straight, get Pat having problems. Here comes Greg Vasco. And Vasco making the pass. Our battle continues for a third. Bob Arsenberger haunting the back proper of Vasco. Now he did. Oh, look out down the back straight. Hang on to it, Bob. Oh, hang on to it, Bob. Oh, oh boy. Good job of keeping it off the wall. Well, that whole thing started when he and Kelly Shaw were both. It'll be up the hop, he jumps on it, the green's unfolded, we're up to speed in racing. Down the back straightaway, Hulp stretching it out, oh, off the pace is Kelly Shawless. Shawless having problems. Into Johnson on the part, 77, slows down. It is still the AJ's furniture. Machine of Dave Hall stretching it out by eight car lengths over Butch Durkis. Durkis holds the distance. Oh, Durkis loses control of the automobile, brings it back on line. But Bob Arsenberg has all the opportunity in the world to dive down below him and waste no time doing it as they wrestle through turns three and four, and Arsenberg comes up to the second place position. Bob Arsenberger now begins to stretch it out and close in on Hop, but he's certainly running out of time in real estate. Even though we have six laps remaining, it's a lot of distance to make up. 
for the Miller and Pennsylvania driver. a battle for third down the back straight. Ford Sturkus is having handling problems on this Ford Thunderbird. The car keeps washing on the turns and wasting no time. Greg Pasco takes the pass in the Macero Electric, number 11. Get Pat, the former drag racer from Shadyside, Ohio, trying to do the same as it works down the back straight, and he completes the pass on Durkus. Durkus still trying to hang on to it, but every time he exits out of the turns, the car goes washing up on him. It's not laundry day, but it looks like a production. The white flag out for Dave Hulp. Hulp with control of this event. Arsenberger, this in the second, as they work down the back straight. Here comes a checker, Hulp takes it, followed by Arsenberger. A distant third will go to Greg Vasco. Four to get Pat a running out the top by Boyd Sturkus. The big sprinting machine, Jeff Dunmire and his zero. Machine. Behind the wheel this afternoon, Connorsville, Pennsylvania's Bob Sprite Castle III. third. And uh, what an unusual looking piece of machinery. That is Joe Diddle's automobile. He campaigned it last night at Jennerstown, but cost behind the wheel this afternoon. Let's see what they do with it. Green's out, we're up to speed in racing. And it turns one and two, and Wilchop takes off of the lead. <laughs> 25 of Krauss right there. Here comes Brad Kinkle. He dies to the low side in a third place position. Cole with a wick turned up, conducting his court on the outside of the speedway. Is it going to back straight? Oh, Will Trump loses the handle. And here comes Krause. Krause wasting no time in the big sprinting. a &H video holiday in machine moves the fourth Thunderbird into the point position. Cole now works the low side of Will Trump and Brad Cole breaking through with the JW Industries Pizza Hut 68. Here comes the Appalachian Motors Bruning by the 07 of Jeff Dunmar, and likewise Dunmar able to accomplish the pass, moves up to the third place spot. Dunmar now works to the outside of Cole's automobile and turns one and two. Cole continue to haunt the back bumper of the 25 of Krauss, and Dunmar still trying to work the outside of Cole. Now tucks right in behind him as they work through turns three and four. Cole up to the high line, Dunmar down to the low side as they drag race down the front straight. Into turns one and two. It continues to beat Krauss on the point position. Krauss goes up high. Here comes Cole. The window's up on the low side. Cole puts on the mask, tries to play the cat burglar, but Krauss slams the window on his fingers. We continue green flag racing. On the front straight, Cole trying to do it again. Dummer up high. We almost had a sandwich truck, but Cole finds the opening, and Dummer sneaks through as well. to the back bumper, Cole haunting him and trying to take the point position. They work out of turns three and four. Dummer tries to lose like Cole up high, hanging on to it. two laps to go. It's a neighborhood battle featuring Somerset, Pennsylvania. Cole working in the middle groove. Dummer tries to lose like cannot make the move as they work down the back straight. Here they go through turns three and four. Brad Cole hanging on to it, the white flag. One lap remaining. 
Here to one and two. King Cole works the middle group. Now ducks down to the close. Tight apex of the middle of the turn. Uh, Lying down the back straight, holding a car length over Dunmar. Dunmar trying to sit up, but he's running out of time in real estate. And the checker will go to Brad Cole. Can reach out, smile at each other, and say, let's go racing. Field tights out, up turn four, the green's unfolded. We are up to speed in racing. And the turns one and two, and uh, Triple C takes off with the lead. Here comes Audi. Barry Otto looking at Pencil down the back straight. With the wick turned up, Audi looks to the low side of Craig's automobile. Craig denies him the opportunity as they work out of turn four. You might say the 42 machine has the field covered from the lead position to the back. Craig and in the point position machine, Bob Arsenberger watching the racing in front of him in the last spot. Barry Audi trying to make the move around Craig and almost got under that automobile. Now the car begins to wash out of it. And Rick Miller closes up to his back bumper. Bob Sibla holds on to the fourth place spot. Snooky Williams running the strong fifth. Here comes a 24 Kennedy up to Williams. Battle for a second shakes up on the back straight. Miller trying to close in on Audi's automobile. Cannot make the move. Bob Arsenberger brings the 42 machine into the pits. Defending his back in the second place position. Exiting out of turn two down the back straight. Into three and four, Audi holds hang to second. Uh, Rick Miller drives the low side. Bob Sibla right there. Now up high is Audi. Here comes Miller. Miller with the wick turned up. Connors with Pennsylvania driver dies to the low side. Audi and it's a side by side wheel to wheel battle for the vice right spot. And out of turn four, Rick Miller trying to make the move as long as the pass as they go into turn one and two. Straight, it continues to be Greg. Rick Miller running in second. Barry Audi holds on to third. Here comes Bob Civil and down the first day. Bob Civil tries the left side on Audi. The white flag, Greg, and holds it on to the point. This battle for third continues to be a good one. Bob Sibla trying to low side on Audi's automobile. They work down the back straight in the struggle for third. This time around, charge and Charlie Cragen will pick up the checker. Second goes to Miller. Third, Audi hangs on to a Sibla fourth and Snooky Williams fifth. So it's Charlie Cragen, Rick Miller, Barry Audi, Bob Sibla, and Snooky Williams, your top five finishers in his first quarter. Comes up to speed, the green's unfolded, and we are racing. Tim Ice in a fast racing edge as we roll. Also, Bill Body Howe Chassis Machine jumps right to the lead. It's a side by side battle for second place position. Galt the American Title Trust 77. Bobby Henry wrestles the low side on Galt as they work on a four. And Henry trying to move, he does. Henry moves up to the second place position. Going to by Danny White off the racing service into the grass momentarily. Continues in fourth. Working into turns three and four. It continues to be to 65 of the Iceman. Bobby Henry in second, trying to close in. On the Ohio Pirates. Meanwhile, the 32 of Glenn Galt hangs on to third. Galt now tries to close in on Henry down the back straight. 
Danny White continues at fourth. Rick Jock holds on to fifth all by himself. Then it's Mark Smith and Bob Smith. Here comes Gold. Gold ready to reclaim second. Gold trying to reclaim second from Henry, and he does it. Glenn Gold waits for Bobby Henry's car to wash out, and he reclaims second and sets his sights for Tim Ice. down in the back straight, trying to separate himself from Glenn Gold. Gold, in American title trust, big body, 32 begins to close the gap on ice. Time running out to cross flag. Five by stop, five remaining. And Glenn Gold is definitely really closing into the middle, turns on the ice man. Tim looks like he has it coming off the turns, but Glenn Gold's able to reel him in through the middle. Watch this, here comes Gold, closing up a car length or so. Then out of four, ice holds him. But Glenn really, he can begin to close in and read that little 65 on the back bumper of Ice's automobile. He's that close. Really have the opportunity to challenge for the lead in his second qualifying heat for the Gatling Slate models out of turn four. This time around, seven laps in the record book. Ice down the back straight. Glenn Gold right there, trying to close in on that back bumper. Here we go, two laps remaining. In the third, one and two. Glenn Gold right there in striking distance, two car lengths away, here comes the 23 Danny White. White trying to low side on Bobby Henry, trying to make a move for third. Meanwhile, Gold right there in the back cover, Tim Ice the White flag flails, one lap remaining. Here comes Danny White. White to the low side of Henry, they try to struggle again. Here's one and two. Danny White right to the low side, making a serious challenge. Exiting out of four, it'll be ice with the win. Gold is second, here's the battle for third, out of turn four. Now Bobby Henry comes back up on him, but the 23 Danny White wins by a half a car lane. White by a half a car lane at the checker for third place position. So it's Tim Ice, Glenn Gold. Seven up, remember race fans, you've got the right one, baby. Uh, uh. Hey, Patsy. Okay, we're getting ready to go racing. 10 laps of distance. First qualifying event for Stoney's Ice. Three stops on the floor. Look at this down the front straight. We're three wide. It's Greg Unruh with the zero on the lead. 66 of Jason Mignon right there in second. Komarinski in the 33. Hurricane Hemminger. That's Mike Henry in the 72. Oh, no, look at this. Wow, the 33 of Komarinski down low. Oh, 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 oh. Clowns. All right, Bob the Clown. Here we go, out of turn four. Thank you, Patsy. And the green's out, we'll try it again. We are racing. Greg Unruh into turns one and two. John Kowarinski takes the lead down the back straight. Bionati goes into the second place position. They work into turn three and four. Kowarinski trying to hang on to it with Adi right behind him. Adi tries to low side. Oh, Kowarinski gets up high, but he hangs on to it. Kowarinski with the Salty Dog Grand Prix, Rolling Rock 33, Dirt Tracks, the automobile. But the Bros number 75 of Adi gets by for the lead position. John Kowarinski now comes right back up on him. He's not letting him run away with it. Adesh in third place position. Here's the 55 of the wild man, Alan Angelicchio Jr. And he's beginning to cast the fishing line upon the waters of racing and hook the back bumper Kowarinski. And he begins to rip, 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 reel him in. to turn three and four. Audi continues on the point position. Komarinski trying to close in on him. Alan Angelico with the front bumper and grill work. Alters continues out there and he is really lessening the distance between the top two running machines. Down the back straight as we work on lap four into turns three and four. 
Komarinsky trying to close right up to the back bumper of Audi's automobile. On the front straight, the cross flags, five left, down by remaining. Audi continues, stretching it out by three and a half car lengths. John Komarinsky in second, now begins to reel him back in, and it's, uh, it's just variations on a theme, so to speak, with all the distance changing between the relationship of these positions. at this and three and four. Alan Angelico, the wild man, muscling his way to the low side of Komarinsky. They work that battle for the second place position and Angelico gets it. Here comes Komarinsky right back on bottom. Cannot make the move down the back straight. Out of turn two, the battle rages on for a second. Angelica holds on and begins to stretch it out over Komarinsky. Here comes Mike, the Hurricane Heminger. Heminger looks to the outside of Komarinsky, who starts a dirt track, his automobile. A white flag, one lap remaining. Oh my goodness. John Komarinsky, looks like the handling problems are coming up on that automobile down the back straight is Heminger, dies on the low side of him. We work through turns three and four, getting ready to unfold the checker. Here's the battle for the lead, and it's going to be Brian Audi holding off. Al Angelico, third goes to Heminger, and fourth goes to John Komarinsky. A very distant fifth to the 41 of Paul Bennett. to speed and racing. Oh, no! Whoa, it looked like a mechanical wave down the front straight. And uh, put my heart back in my chest and we continue green flag racing. Oh, personally guarantee it. Marty Edwards on the point position as he leads the automobiles in this drag race down the front straight. Here comes Jack Sadowski. Sadowski in the keyway supply number 30 looks to the low side of Edwards. Edwards fades up high. Here comes Sadowski. And Hoover, so Pennsylvania's favorite son, takes over the point possession. Ron Coral has the wick turned up in the Valley Truck and Trailer Service 25 in the State College, Pennsylvania. Driver runs side by side, wheel to wheel. And a battle for the last train spot. We're going to turn one and two, and Coral trying to take over the second place position. Brian, oh, 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 Carl Trevera up high. He's into the marbles. Hang on to it, Carl. Oh, he does a beautiful job of avoid overcorrecting the automobile. The former Rick Chalk ride, and he loses lots of positions in turn three. Meanwhile, Cora has gotten through for the second place spot. On the back straight, Ron Cole in second place position. The 57 of Marty Edwards, such a Pennsylvania driver in a studies light machine. Hangs on to third. And he closes right back up to the back bumper of Ron Cole. Bomb has been going side by side with Nick Rosa for many a laps back in the field. But as the cross flags are displayed by NASCAR chief starter Ron Brock, we see that the 57 of Marty Edwards begins to close on the back bumper of Coral as they work in that second place struggle. Meanwhile, Coral closes right up to Satowski's automobile, exiting out of turn four. Coral ties that low side. Komarinsky. Komarinsky's in the pits. <laughs> there he jacks the pass skills on the lead. Here comes.
comes a struggle for the lead of Matt Stain. Rowe, the yellow flag goes out for Rosa, who loops the automobile. Out of turn four. The grease is out and we are racing. Here's the battle for the lead. Ron Coral Place, Pete Cabo on the low side. But Jack Sos Toski says it's not Halloween yet as they work into three and four. Satoski with the Keyway Supply, Chevelle holding on to that lead position. Coral tries the low side as they work down the front straight. Two left remaining. And it turns one and two. Out of turn four, Jack Satoski. Oh, scattering in the field. Oh, a hit. Nick Rosa in an aftermath situation gets into the 10 of Gary Wilchuk. It will be a dash for the cash, so to speak. Here we go. Out of turn four, the green's out and we are racing. Here's the battle for the lead. Crow goes down low. Tries to make the move on Satoski. Down the back straight away, Satoski up the high line. Crow down low. They dive into turn three and four, Ron Coral there. Oh, 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 we're gonna have one left to go, one left to go, and I see a battle shaping up. Here we go, into turn 22. Valley Track and Trailer Show is 25, Ron Coral dives to the low side on Satoski, cannot make the move. Jack Satoski says, no thank you, I don't wanna buy any fuller brushes this afternoon. As they work into three and four, Satoski holds on to it, but the salesman ever slamming on the door is Ron Coral. Almost loses control, but the wing goes to Jack Satoski. Coral finishes second. Marty Edwards is third. 22, Tony Bonfort. And the five, Carl Trevera finishes fifth. And uh, 62, Ron Coral, 338. Jason Mignon with 304. Get that backwards. The two is inside second row. Don Blank in a 45. Sean, the bullet beam in a 28. Kurt, as we get ready, the green's on in. We're racing. Kurt Bennett in the 87. And the one's a flying sign painter of Dave Brunel, and it turns one and two. Harry Flyers takes over the lead as they work down the back straightaway. Make that Kurt Stewart. Kurt Stewart in the 87, Butch Durkis' former ride. Look at the bullet come up through the field. He dies to the low side of Tim Stump and moves into the third place position. And it turns one and two, the Terminator up high. Here comes the Baron trucking 28 of the bullet. John Dean works into the bridesmaid spot. Meanwhile, the Jim's auto and truck stop. 18, trying to close in and keep it a three car battle out of four. Here comes the lead fight on the front straight. Flowers out of working three, Harry flies in the middle group. Sean the ball beam down the low side. Chance break through for the lead. And he accomplishes the pass out of turn two. Here comes the flying side painter. Dave Brunel marching up through the field in fourth place position. Parks right up to the back bumper of Coconuts 18 as they work out of turn four. Into the pits goes Kurt Stewart with the 87. The bullet keeps the wick turned up, holds on to the lead. The battle for second, third, and fourth. And now the one of Dave Brunel, the high tech hobbies machine. Stretching on the low side, trying to break through in the battle for third with the Terminator out of turn four. And the flying sign painter takes it. Eight laps of distance we go. A short distance for the Pure Stocks as opposed to other three divisions. Eight circuits. Treaded street tires out there, dirt tracking as we continue. Green flag racing. Bullet has stretched out the lead over Flowers. Meanwhile, Brunel continues holding on to third. And it turns one and two. Harry Flowers in the second place spot. Get the car all crossed up. Dave Brunel with an opening and a window trying to play the cat burglar. And Harry Flowers denies him the opportunity. Coconut momentarily imitating a lawnmower hitting into the grass. And we continue with two last remaining. Oh, almost buying each other's paint job out there. On the one of Dave Brunel and the three of Harry Flowers. They wrestle side by side, wheel to wheel in the battle for the bridesmaid spot. It's Flyers, then it's Brunel, then it's Flyers, then it's Brunel, now it's Brunel. The white flag, one circuit to go. Dave Brunel in the second place position. Working into turns one and two. And Flyers tries to low side. Chris Kukaner says, oh, no! 
plays the lawnmower, gets into the bumper of Harry Frogs. Oh! oh! How about that one, race fans? We hooked bumpers and did a little pirouette down the back straight. Uh, field on a turn four, we are green and racing. And it turns one and two. Tim Stump tries the low side of the flying sign pinner Dave Burnell, but Burnell, the Greensburg, Pennsylvania chauffeur denies in the opportunity. It's labeled at the 74 Ford Torino hanging on to the point position. The Baron trucking sponsor machine as the white waves, one circuit remaining. Turn four up high goes the 28 of beam. The checker falls and he takes it over the one of Burnell. 65 is stopping at three of flyers. <laughs> 74 is Rick Shearer. Marcy's here. Kelly's. Kelly's the son of Judy and Alan is the cousin of Kelly. It's a lot of Shawless's race, believe me. Here we go. Green's on photo. We're up to speed in racing. And it turns one and two. It is Griffith holding on to the point position. Here comes the Marcy's hair salon. And it's time to whip up a new do in the 74. Oh, oh, Fitzy Shaws is going to make a three wide momentarily. And she's good. That might be Judy in that car. Whoa! Oh, that may be Judy in there. Judy's the one with the lead foot, although maybe it, uh, you know, might be hereditary here. And Mitzi has found the handle. Down the back straight. Let's call it Mitzi for now. She's to the high side, and Jimmy Friedline sneaks through. Oh, oh, Mitzi comes right back up on Friedline. Whoa! Whoa! Look at that. That's what I call door leaning. And I'll tell you what, ladies, there is one young lady out there that is not intimidated by the men. How about it, girls? Look at her. Oh, oh, boy. Just when I start to brag about her, she loses control and drops a few positions. And the cap guns exploded. We continue green flag racing. Racing mufflers on all our automobiles in the 92 season. And uh, they're different than street mufflers and they do collect some of the fuel sometimes and backfire like we just heard. Nothing wrong with it. We continue green flag racing. Holy smokes, who's making the popcorn in turn one? Oh, look at free line up high in his battle for third. It opens the low side to Triple L. Lucky Larry Lee Hemminger trying to low line. Jimmy Friedland says, no, thank you, and closes the door. Mark Griffith is trying to survey his situation and pick out a groove that'll work to get around Sheila. Sheila, meanwhile, dirt tracks the automobile holding on to the lead as they work into turns three and four. Up high goes Sheila. Here comes Griffith down low, down the front straight. Two laps to go from NASCAR. She started Ron Buck into one and two. Mark Griffith desperately trying to hang on to the back. Bubber Sheila. A battle for third rages on. Jimmy Freeline goes up high. Larry Hemmer wants to play the cap burglar. He's trying to die through to the low side as they work into turns three and four. This time around, race fans, the white flag unfolded. One lap remaining. They dive into turn 22. Here's the battle for the lead. Oh, Griffith up high, and he gets into the 74 Sheila. Sheila says, we'll have none of that, and keeps going with the lead position. They work into turn three and four. It's a mechanical caterpillar, four cars strong. Here it is. Do we have a photo finish? No, it'll be the 74 Sheila hanging on to it. That concludes our qualifying. Could mean, because of the 10 shorter laps of the normal 35er run, could mean a difference in how they cross for the checker. Good. Champion Star Markets machine, fourth Thunderbird automobile. Glenn Gold inside third row. We're getting ready to go. Starter run, Brett looks him over. Ready for the green flag. 
It's a forward. We are up to speed and racing, and Henry gets the job. In a third, one and two, Bobby Henry takes the lead. Rick Chalk in the inside line begins to move down the back straight. Chalk in the second. Bob Sibyl a third. Danny White tries the low side of Sibyl. They battle for the third place position. Watch it's out of turn four. Charging Charlie Craig and working the low side. Going down the first straightaway. Down to the first one and two. And Bob Sibyl up the high side. Trying to make the move. Here comes White down the low line once again. Going go of the high line. Craig and right there. Craig and Dice. To the low side with Colt. They run side by side. Sibyl having problems. White breaks through for them. Here comes Craig. Oh, by the first straight. Danny like Momentary's off the pace, but he continues. Green percussion to the back of the field. White, Sybil, and Craig. Three red automobiles out there. My goodness, Tim Ice better stay away from that. He hates the color red. On the first straight, we're trying to make it. Three wide and oh my goodness, Craig and Charlie with a dive bomber move. Takes over the third place spot. Charging, Charlie Craig and Surfing the car in turns one and two in the last lap. Bobby Henry continues with the lead as they work down the back straight. Rick Jock is second. Charging Charlie Craig with a look at Here comes Glenn Gold. Gold on the move now as they work out of turn four. A 23 at Danny White. Oh, God. Dude, this is a nice position. Middle of the pack, there's all kinds of action going on. Continues being Bobby Henry. Henry holding that point position. Rick Jock hanging on to second. In the third, one and two. Jock pressuring Henry. Jock, here comes the charging one. Bob Arsenberger pulls the extra right into the pits. Craig and now trying to close in on Jock and Henry. Straight. Charging Charlie Craig and trying to make a move, but Glenn Gold's closing. Tim Ice now works to the outside of Danny White. Danny Iceman makes it to the fifth place position. Now look at this. Jock up high. Craig and down low and Gold's moving right in. Charging Charlie Craig and trying to dive into the second place spot. Out of turn four and Craig and takes over second. Here comes Gold. Gold on the move. Wayne Gold trying to work the low side of Rick Jock. And Gold down the back straight. Moving right up to the low side of Jock. And he dives in. No, not quite yet. Jock hanging tough on the outside. Craig is getting the pressure, Henry. Wayne Gold, meanwhile, working the low side of Rick Jock. Henry up high. Here comes Craig and in a battle for the lead. Down the back straight. But Bobby Henry holds on to it. And down the front straight. Henry up high. Glenn Gold now in third begins to close up. A battle royale for the lead. Charlie Craig and in striking distance. He's going to have to try to make a move soon because Glenn Gold's closing right up. Craig and then checks the car. Cannot make the move and Henry holds on to it. Henry holds on to the lead. Craig and tries the low side. On lap 12. In the thirds, one and two. Henry with the point position. Craig and tries it again. They work in the three and four. Henry fades up high. Craig and tries the low side down the front straight. In the thirds, one and two. Craig making his presence known. Tim Ice trying to get by Chuck. Chuck Kennedy up through the field. Watch Chuck Kennedy race fans. On lap 14, Chuck Kennedy's a man on the move. Gold up high, Craig and down low, down the front straight. Working into turns one and two. Henry continues in the middle of the move. Craig and on the low side. As they work down the back straight. High again, Craig and tries it low, cannot make the move. Gold tries to work on him. 
Bobby Henry has to be careful. One slight miscue. Big in a grab the lead. But Henry up for the task. And Ian Nicholson inside. On transmission, 77 is up. Man with a task at hand of holding off Craig. And a man with a mission of wanting to capture it. He was in victory lane early this year. But three cues. Unfortunate chip delay. And the win was taken away at first race in Texas. But this time he's out there holding on to it. Craig now makes a serious bid down the front straight. In and out of the lead. They dive into turn 22. Glenn Gold trying to work the high side of Craig. Craig is down low on Henry. Henry denies the opportunity. Here comes Gold. Craig with his hands full. Gold tries the high side. Now, Craig and down low again with Henry. They go side by side in a battle down the front straight. In the turn 22. And Clark and Charlie Craig and then two for the lead. On lap 19. Here comes Glenn Gold, race fans. Gold does the same with the window open. Watch Glenn Gold. Gold, a man up to the task of pressuring Craig. And the one and two. Glenn Gold, go back. Oh, Craig slips up here. Comes Gold. Gold to the left side on Craig. They dive into the turn. Play it down. Side by side, one of the wheel. Charging Charlie Craig and Glenn Gold. Go checking out a bar and a battle for the lead. Down the front straightaway. In the one and two. Glenn Gold and Charging Charlie Craig. And Gold takes two for the lead on lap 21. Gold hooked up in flight, bring it back to second. Glenn Gold, the man on the move, begins to stretch it out over Craig. They work in the turns one and two down the back straight. Craig and desperately trying to close in on Gold. Gold, the man on the move. Lap 22, only three remaining. Craig and now closing up to the back bumper once again as he dives into one and two. There are two laps remaining. Craig and Charles alongside on Gold. Hexing out of turn two, cannot make the move. They dive into turn three and four. This time around, it's the right flag. One lap remaining. Craig and looks high, go to the middle two. They dive into turns one and two. Craig and sets up to the right side. One go holds him off. Down the back straightaway. Gold starts to stretch out his lead. They dive into turn three and four. Glenn Gold in the middle group. Craig and now low for the real booty. Out of turn four. Here comes Bobby Henry. Glenn Gold wins. Glenn Gold being congratulated in victory lane by crew members, Connor Larry Zalata, Glenn's wife. He'll pick up the Gatlings Auto Store trophy in his first leg of the twin 25s for the Gatlings late models. Joe, roll it down here. He'll have a chance to talk to Glenn in victory lane, get his impressions of how the event went. Well, Bobby Henry held on to the lead through the first 15 circuits make that 19 circuits and Craig and jumping in the lead the Glen Gold following suit into second and then four la three laps later Galt takes over the lead from Craig on lap 21 and holds off Craig and to the checker Glen Gold into victory lane and American title trust Galt brothers heating and air conditioning Buick Regal body Port City chassis dream racing engine powered machine Miss motor drum Gary Ritchie down there presenting the trophy and Joe will turn it down to you being joined in victory lane by, I believe that's some family member. I think Paul's down there. I know the one of them. All right, it's down to Joe Rolick momentarily.
Mike, I have Glenn Galt down here. Glenn, uh, second win down here? That's, uh, yeah, it's been a long time in between. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, obviously, you you haven't had the year that you're used to having. I'm sure this towards the end of the season, going into some of the bigger uh, end of the season races, gives you a little bit of momentum. Uh, tell us a little bit about the race there. It looks like you uh, followed Charlie and Bobby, and Charlie used up. Looks like he used up a lot of tire trying to get around Bobby. Is that what you think happened? Yeah. Well, the track uh, got loose, and it looks like it got loose for him. But uh, my car went the other way, got kept tight. So uh, that's what really helped me out. So you really hit the hot setup. Uh, what are you gonna do, you change your car any, or just gonna leave it alone for the next 25 laps? I think we'll just leave it alone, just wipe it off and let, let it go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Galt. JW Industry, 68. Brad Kent Cole from Somerset. Hello here, but it's not so, VJ's Express. Bendy Cole's pace going to the pits, greens out, we are racing. One and two, Greg Vasco in the point position. Will Trot outside of him, and Gary Will Trot goes into the lead down the back straight. He wastes no time doing it. Look at Dave Hoff. Hoff down low with Vasco, and the inside line won't move. Down there. Oh, look out by the first straight. The yellow comes out. I'm a little confused here. Oh, no, what's this? Okay. All right. Get Pat on the point now with Will Trot. Let's see what happens. Green's unfolded. We're up to speed and racing. Watch this field down the front straight. Will Trot takes off with the lead. Anything can happen. The Pepsi Pro Stocks on the back straight. Keep your eyes on Dave Hopp in the back of the field, but look at the top five automobiles. King Cole wants part of this action. In the turns, one and two. Get Pat, gets the car, crossed up, almost buys the outside retaining wall. Jeff Dunbar gets through. Cole gets through. Arsenberg gets through. Here comes Butch Durkis to the low side of cross, and Durkis gets through for six. Up high goes Wiltrot. Here comes Dunbar. Lap three down the back straight. Jeff Dummer takes over the lead from Cole. Here comes the battle for third into turn three and four. Bob Arseberger trying to work the low side of the ten and will try. Cannot make the move. They work in turn three and four. Here comes Brad Cole to the lead. Cole down the front straight, and he goes to the lead position. Down the back straight, Cole with the lead, Jeff Dunbar right there, hanging on to his back bumper. But Cole denies him the opportunity. In the turns, one and two, the third, Somerset, Pennsylvania driver. Hooked up in a neighborhood battle. Cole on the point, Dunbar behind him. Dunmar haunting that back bumper. Cole, they work at a three and four. Jeff Dunmar trying the low side of Brad Cole. Cannot make the move. Wow, Bill Panay out there not knowing where to go in the racing service. His cars are getting by him left and right to continue this battle for the lead. In thirds, one and two. Brad Cole holds on to the lead. Jeff Dunbar is glued to the back cover. King Cole, personal two-car battle on lap nine. As they work into turns one and two. Dunbar continues trying to work the back bumper. Cole cannot do it. 
comes Dunleary, sets up for the low side. Trying to open the window, but Pink Cole denies on the opportunity. They work through turns three and four. Out of turn four, it's Emma trying to make the move. Cole holds the lock. Oh, watch it down the back straight here. Oh, come on. What a beautiful job he does of saving. Oh, oh, no. I called it too soon there. And Dunma, you know, it's like an ice skating rink once you get sideways on pavement. All right, lights on. We're ready to go back to restart. Now, Rapid Robert will challenge King Cole. Here we go. Green's out. We're up to speed in racing. Who's coming up from the back of the pack? Dave Hop now making his presence known in six. Hop moving up to the field. Look at Dunma after being airborne. The VJ's Express lives up to the name Express as it comes up through the field. Forget race fans, we've got a toward points battle going on here. Brad Cole and Bob Arsenberger are tied for Motodrome track points. This is not only a battle for the win, but the track points are tied between Cole and Arsenberger. They both want to wear the crown, and it can't be done. Only one can do it, and they continue this struggle. In the turns, one and two, Cole stretches it out over Eisenberger down the back straight. Bill Cross impressively continues to hang on to third. Cole begins to stretch it out. Arsenberger hanging on to second. If Cole wins, Arsenberger finishes second. Cole will have a two-point advantage going into next week's racing action. 26 points for win and track points. And then two points thereafter for each position beyond the win. A great battle stakes up now. The three of 33 of Durkis and the 10 of Wilchot, 4-4. And Wiltrock gets through for the fourth place spot. Here comes Dave Hoff trying to do the same, but look at Jeff Dunmire. Lap 17 and Dunmire still coming up through the field. Dunmire to the low side of Hobbs automobile. And Dunmire, the man coming alive in this event. Dirkus, meanwhile, tries the low side of Wiltrock. They're very close together, three and four. We continue green flag racing. On the back straight, the battle with Dirkus moving in the fourth. Now we have Dunmar in the fifth. Hop tries to make it through. Will Trump denies the opportunity. On a restart. Cole on the point. Arsenberger right there. Green's unfolded. We're up to speed in racing. In a third, one and two. Jeff Dummer tries the high side of Bush Circus now. Sets up maybe looking for the low line pass down the back straight. There he goes. He prances on it. And the VJ's Express Appalachian Motor 07 moves to the fourth place position. Sets his sights on the top three running machine as time's running out. Bob Eisenberger now with a strike on Cole down the back straight. Eisenberger looks to the low side, cannot make the move. Jeff Dunma all the while begins to close in on these three automobiles. Can you believe it? After being airborne, is looks to be faster than he was earlier. It's a four-car mechanical caterpillar. With, oh, look out on the front straight. Charles 
A little too wide, loops the automobile, and everybody gets by on skate. Lights out, we're gonna try it again, Cole on the point, but he has a lot of pressure this time. We go back to green, Krauss has problems coming up this beat. Cole with the lead, Bob Arsenberger tries the low side, oh no, oh! Oh, Dirk, I went three, we're still not done. Well, we've got action all over both ends of the speedways. A head-on collision and an invitation of a lawnmower in turn three. Green's out, we're up to speed and racing. And it turns one and two. Brad Cole with the lead. Here comes the pressure from Rapid Robert Arsenberger with two laps remaining. Jeff Dunbar trying for third. We work through three and four. Cole hangs on to the lead. Here comes Arsenberger. Now it's the last lap. In the third, one and two. Arsenberger with the last ditch effort. He dives to the low side, down the back straight. It's a battle for the lead. Here we go into three and four. Oh, we're gonna get a photo finish. Look out, it's Dan Hocking time. Here's a drag race to the checker. Who's it gonna be, Cole? How about that one race, fans? Cole by about two feet over the rapid one. My, oh my, Arsenberger turning up the wick for a last ditch effort, just falls shy at the finish. He's out of the car and can hear now. Nice round of applause for Brad. King Cole. In the victory lane at JW Industries Pizza Hut 68 machine. Cole, driver, in his sophomore season, has become one of the dominant runners in the Pepsi Pro Stocks. And he'll go over to be congratulated by General Manager Chip Rowan and being presented the trophy. Trophies, by the way, this afternoon are courtesy of our friends from Eaton Park Restaurant. <laughs> Remember, race fans, Eaton Park Restaurant, the place for smiles. Eaton Park Restaurant trophies. And this one going to Brad Cole from Kerry Ritchie, Ms. Motordrome Speedway. Free track. And also 738. Bradley, you and Bob Arsenberger tied for the point leads coming out, almost tied for the race. Uh, he gave you a heck of a ride. What, did you do anything? It seems like the later restarts, you really seem to gain on you where the earlier yellow flags you seem to pull away. Is that the way you've seen it? Well, I'll put it this way. We was tied till now, and now I'm two ahead. It's going to be a long battle to the end, but we're going to do it. I want, to, I want to thank my sponsors, Pizza Hut, Somerset Auto, RCC, WVSC. I thank my crew. They did an outstanding job. Thank you. Bradley Cole, ladies and gentlemen. Real quick here on these door prizes, too. We got number... Um, and Brian Audi, 72, Mike. Hurricane Hemminger, 30 Jack Stavosky, 41 Paul Bennett, 5 Bar Travera, 0 Greg Unruh, 43 Michael Pace car, we're getting set to go. Here we go, oh, 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 we come up to speed and we're racing. Look at this battle in the turn, 1 and 2, Angelico. The Pure Stock graduate in his rookie season, Sonny's Ice Big Stock, jumps in the lead with the pass goes 55. Brian Audi now tries the low side in a battle for top position. Oh, Marty Edwards right there, Tony Baum, and oh! The S-Car commander there, Bill Ass. Oh boy, I gotta get it together. Bill Anton, having problems, brings his car back up to speed. Look at the battle for a second! Ouch, and turn two and three. Something's got to give, folks. You can't keep going like this. Oh, open the refrigerator. Get out the mayonnaise. We got a sandwich job in turn one. And the 33 at Comrade Steve Pine. The 75 Audi down low. Now Audi tries the low side of Marty Edwards. 
They work down the back straight. And Brian Audi bailing for a second. Diving to the low side. Takes, oh, oh Angelique Elmas into the outside of the game. Audi in the second place position. The wild line, Alan Angelico Jr. trying to hang on for this distance. He separated himself over Brian Audi. Alan Angelico is looking for a career first win in his young racing efforts. Back straight, Marty Ellis hangs on the third. Now Komarinsky dives to the low side. They work through turn three and four. And this tight battle for third. Out of turn four, Jack Sapowski moving up through the field. Look at Sapowski between two automobiles. It won't work. It won't work. It. No, oh, I don't know. Uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, everything's okay. Cole gets the worst one. Green's on, and we're up to speed and racing. Down the back straightaway. A wild man, Alan Angelica holds on the lead. Jack Stefanski makes his presence known. Begins to close up on the lead automobiles. Marty Edwards hangs in fourth. Komarinsky fifth. And Mike Heminger hangs on to sixth place position. Marty Edwards up high. Here comes the 33. Komarinsky now the open window in a battle for the lead. Angelico denies Audi the opportunity. They work out of turn four. Brian Audi tries the low side. He's denied it once again. Down the back straight. Brian continues trying to make. Here comes the hurricane. And a storm is brewing in turn three and four. As Mike Hemminger breaks through. Now the battle for the lead. Audi works the low side of Hemminger. They dive into turns one and two. Audi down low, hurrying her up high. And Audi breaks two for the lead on lap eight. On the back straight, Brian Audi now with the point position. Jack Satoski hanging on to third. And Satoski trying to move up to the back bumper into Lika's automobile. Mike Hemminger. Heminger down the back straight, beginning to close on these lead automobiles. This time around, the cross flag, got left top 10 remaining. Turns one and two. Jack Sapowski continues to try to brace his battle on a second place runner, Angelica. Over well, 72 of Mike Hemminger all the while closes in in this battle. On the front Working into turns one and two. Lap traffic in front of the lead automobiles. John gets your kill over the turn two. We've got a great battle going on. Here we go, and it hurts three and four. Well, Brian Audi momentarily had left traffic in front of him. Down in it hurts, one and two. Here we go. And it hurts three and four. On the front straight, into turns, one and two, Brian Audi with a point position. The wild man, Alan Angelicchio, holds on to second. They work down the back straight. Mike Hemmers and Sean Sadowski's automobile for third. This time around, there are five laps remaining. Top 
four battle. It's a mechanical caterpillar. Look at Ron Kuro out of four, trying to get around Komarinsky's automobile. This lead battle at three and four. Henninger tries to high side, cannot make the move. Ties to the low line. On the 30th, the top speed of battle for third. They work in one and two. It's still a hooked up freight train battle. And Audi holds on to it. This time around, there are two laps remaining. Time's running out for Angelico. Still desperately trying to grab a career first win. As Audi leads the way around down the back straight. Exiting out of turn four, the white flag, one lap to go. Will lap traffic come into play? On the back straight, Audi with the lead. Angelica right there, they're coming up on my Dallas automobile. Here we go, out of turn four, and it will be the Rose Lumber, 75 off, Brian Audi, second goes Angelica. Bernie Stosky third, fourth, Mike Hemminger, and fifth, Marty Edwards. The Eaton Park Trophy being presented to Brian from uh, Gary Ritchie, Ms. Motor Drum Speedway, and Joe Wallet get a chance to talk to Brian in Victory Lane shortly. Light Street Stock feature winner, Brian Audi, and now down to Joe Rolick. Thanks, Mike. Brian, uh, coming up the last lap there, seen some loud traffic ahead of you. Do you have any concerns about that? Uh, I knew this far enough ahead. I was just going to take my time getting around them, use them for blockers. Yeah, I seen you went high. I was wondering maybe if uh, Alan Angelique, after you passed him, he seemed to keep right up to you. Did he get loose? Is that how you got by him? These guys seem to be about as fast. Hey, he pushed coming out of turn four, and that's all it takes, one slip up. This is a very tough division, as you can tell by looking at your car this year. It started out really pretty. Uh, sum up your season for us. It's your first year in street stocks. Are you happy with what you've done so far? Yeah, I never thought I'd do, I'd do as good this year as what I did. Moving up, you know, it's something totally new. Uh, but i got to thank my dad, Larry Henniger, Bob Rose, and those guys. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here right now. Yeah, your team really seems, it's, it's really a team. How many cars have the Audi name on it out here? Do you have any idea? Uh, it's up around like eight or nine that I know of, maybe ten. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough to say. Okay, Brian Audi. Thank you, Joe, and congratulations to Brian in victory lane. <laughs> Down the back straight, we get ready for the green flag. We're getting ready to go. Bye. Here we go, folks. Through turn three and four. That was a concession stand. Okay. Green's out. We're up to speed of racing. And the turns one and two. Harry Flowers holding on to the point. The 71 of Griffith right out there. 65 of Tim Stump. 75 of Jimmy Friedline. They work into turns three and four. Oh, my goodness. Out of turn four, it looks like a pace lap down the front straight. Oh my goodness, all kinds of grooves out there. Griffith on the point. Harry Flyers hanging on to second. The 75 of Jimmy Friedline out to the outside. 
They work on a turn three and four up high goes Friedline. Here comes the bullet down the middle of the field. And a one and two up high goes Friedline. Bull in the middle of the field. Down. Oh, look at this. Sean, the bullet beam finds the pistol is unloaded as the car start. Oh, my. Down the back straight, the car slows off the pace, and he's heading for the infield. Mark Griffith looking for a career first win in the point position. Likewise, Harry Flowers and Tim Stump. Then uh, Rick Sheeler and Dave Burnell, they know the way into victory lane. and a bumper comes off. Mitzi Shalas gets on it early, but that's his option. We're green and racing. Larry Lee having or having problems this afternoon. Can't come up through the field. 71 of Griffith continues holding on to the lead. Harry Flyers working in the second place position, a battle for third. Rick Sheila trying it on the back bumper of Tim Stump's automobile. In the turn three and four, the top six automobiles hooked up into a mechanical caterpillar. Up high goes Stump, third track of the automobile. The flying sign painter, Dave Burnell, there. Can I, boy, nobody can seem to make a move. This seems to be interesting. Now goes up high. Is Tim Stump's automobile as Rick Schuler tries the low side. Jimmy Friedland back out of the pits onto the racing service. Oh, oh he almost spins out when he hits off the uh, racing track. the back straight, Mark Griffith hangs on to it. Looking for a career first win is Griffith, but he's got plenty of time left to mess it up if, he, if it happens. So yeah, he's got to keep his fingers crossed. He's doing the job right now. Mark Griffith on the move. The battle for seconds a good one. Harry Flash continues holding off the efforts. Of the 65 of Stump. Whoa. Almost has been in turn one by Rick, uh, Jimmy Greenlight again. Harry Flowers holding off Tim Stump, Rick Sheeler, and Dave Brunell. Neither of those automobiles can get by Flowers and make a charge on Griffin. So the Somerset, Pennsylvania driver continues holding on to the lead. straight. Here's the battle for third. Rick Sheila tries the low side on Tim Stump. Stump denies on the opportunity. Five laps remaining in this event. Make it four. Here comes the 74 Rick Sheila. Sheila, a man on the move. And the Boswell, Pennsylvania driver takes over the third place spot and sets his sights on Harry Flowers. Oh, look at this. Up high goes Harry Flowers out of turn four. And a 74 stop as the window open, he gets through. The one and eight, Brunel does the same as they work in the turns one and two. The flying side pinning it through. Here comes Chris, the Terminator coconut. He tries to make the low side move on fires. Cannot quite do it. 
It's all Mark Griffith. Time running out the white flag. Could this be reality for Griffith? Looking for a career first win. On the pavement, into turns one and two. He has quite a distance over the rest of the field. Down the back straight, look at this. Mark, or Rick Sheeler, dirt tracking in a desperate attempt. But it will be a career first win for Mark Griffith on the pavement. How about that one, race fan? Second goes to Sheila. Warner Brunel is third, Coconut fourth, and Stumpin' a 65 is fifth. Part of the efforts for this rookie driver. How about a nice round of applause? Career first for Mark Griffith on the pavement. Two years experience running dirt and duros at the Somerset County Oval in Myersdale, PA. And it pays off as we near the end of the season in the victory lane for Mark Griffith. And he's gotta be happy about this one. The car ran strong from start to finish. Kerry Ritchie will present the Eaton Park Trophy to Mark and the victory lane. efforts on the pavement. Mark Griffith, Mark, first win. How's it feel, Killer? Oh, excellent, excellent. You race with the Audi team. Uh, are you the last pure stock here that, to get a win out of that stable? Yeah. I got it. The guys weren't leaning on you a little bit about you being the only one without a win yet, were they? Oh, no, they're, they're definitely still behind us. It just took time, I guess. Well, I meant joking around, being that uh, you're the last one to get the win. Do you guys have a little rivalry going on? No, no. no. Just, just a basic team, straight team effort? Oh, yeah. It's all for one and one for all down there. I noticed you had a uh, wall trip 17 thing here on your roll cage. You want to explain that to us? No, that's one of the guys from our crew. That's his favorite driver. We just stuck that in for him. See, he won last night, you win today. What do you know? Maybe I'll start something. <laughs> there you go, Mark Griffith. Congratulations, Mark. Thank you, Joe. And again, congratulations go out to some. Pace car into the pits. Let's see what happens. Out of turn four, Green comes up. We are up to speed and racing. In the turns one and two, audience Sybil in a drag race for the lead. Sybil takes over the point position down the back straight. Here comes Rick Miller. Miller diving through, trying to work for a second. Look at the car stacked up. One and two in about a four second with Sibla. Oh, Chuck, it's up high. The inside line moves. Here comes Craig and Ice. Rick Miller in the second, race fans. As we work on a lap two down the front straight. Bob Sibla down the back straight. In command of the event. Rick Miller stays distance by two car lengths. Charger, Charlie Craig and Glenn go closing up to the Iceman as Tim Ice works the best up there anyway. In the turn, one and two, Rick Miller now really applying the pressure on Sibla down the back straight. But Bob Sibla hanging tough as he work into turn three and four. Oh, Sibla's car looks like in the middle of the turns is going away from the handling. He works straight to the middle of the turns and the handling going by. Rick Miller not able to take advantage of it. Sibla really has the steam down the straightaways. Right in the middle touch, he may be kicking that chassis to help boy to spin down the back straight. This is Kurt Havadel with a spin down the back straight. Havadel spun down the back straight. Havadel has spun down the back straight. 
Kurt Havidel has come down the back straight. All right. Here we go. Bob Sill on the plug will command this orchestra horsepower down. Out of turn four, Green Top World Racing. Bashful about it. These guys in the Gatling's late models, a little scraping out there. We continue. Green flag racing. We're all stacked up in a battle for the lead. Up high goes Danny Roy. Loose up positions. Up high goes Craig. And here comes Goat. Craig and I's Goat. The opportunity. Six cars hooked up in a mechanical catapult. And make it seven. Here comes a 24. Stop Kennedy now joining this battle. Simple holding on to it. On lap seven, Bob Silver holds on to the lead. Watch Craig on the outside. Ice down low. Ice is on the move. Simmons trying to make the move on Audi. Oh, Charlie Craig on the outside getting boxed up. Here comes a 32 of Glenn Go. Go works the low side on Craig and the low line moves. Ice gets to a run now. Goat trying to do it. He gets the car slowly. In the turns one and two. What a battle for the top position. Craig and gets blocked out down the back straight. And Wingo comes through the low side. Oh, very oddy. They work out of turn four. Bob Sibble holds on to the lead. Rick Miller in second. Tim Ice in third. Here comes a 32 of Glen Gulf. Three Ohio drivers in the top four positions at this point in the event. Glen Gulf makes it through for a strong fourth place position on lap 11. Bob Sibla desperately holding on to it. Rick Miller knocking on the door. Here comes Craig and through trying to make through for fifth. For the fifth place spot. Sibble right there with the lead. Ice tries the low side on the 19 of Miller. Lingo continues in fourth. Here comes Chuck Kennedy now on the Audi side of my bill. Oh, look at this down the front straight. Good ice on the move. Ties to the low side of Rick Miller. Bob Sibble has all kinds of pressure. Down the back straight. He denies the opportunity. Oh, look, at here comes Craig and, and Gold. They're all stacked up. Sybil has lost the handling in the middle of the turns. He's desperately holding on to the lead. Oh, my goodness. What a freight train battle. Oh, look out, have if we continue. Oh, the yellow comes out. Well, you know the talents of Rick Miller, Tim Ice, Glenn Gold, and Charlie Craig in behind him. He gets on it early. That's his option. Green Top we're racing. Bob Silva still with the lead. Rick Miller holds on to his back bumper down the back straight. Here we go, out of turn four. Silva works the low line, base up high. In the one and two, Rick Miller drives the high side. Cannot make the move. Ice looks for the low line on Miller. On the back straight. There are only 10 laps remaining. Bob Silva desperately trying to hang on for the lead. They go in the turn three and four, and Bob Silva with the point position. Down the back, they don't know who it is. Silva now momentarily seems to have some newfound light. Yeah, the Martinelli service 63. Here comes Rick Miller, though. He tried the low line that time. Silver, oh, look at this! Look at this! Wow! Oh! Rick Miller tried even going off the racetrack onto the dirt to get around Silver, but it was not to be. Oh. How about Craig? We'll see shortly. 
Down to the back straight, Green's out, we're racing. Here comes the Iceman! Down the front, Taylor Woods takes the move on Bob Slibberer, watches up high, takes the lead, Bob Slibberer on the restart. Wendell Gope trying to make the move as well. Look at Gope down to the low side of Sibla, and Gope wrestles through for second place position. Three and four. Bob Sibla back to third. Now Tim Ice has to contend with Glenn Go. Go putting the pressure on Ice. On right, the back straight. Glenn Go running in second place position, trying to put the pressure on Ice. Bob Sibla fades back to the third place spot, continuing to hold that spot. has found the handle on this newer Hal chassis machine and continues to hold the point position. They work in the turn 22. The Iceman right there and went off behind down the back straight. This time around, there's going to be two laps remaining for Ice. Ice holds two car oh, in a spin. In a spin and turns one and two. And a two for two. Double G would like to be double wins. Here we go. But the Iceman pulls off and the green comes out. We're racing. Tim Ice now. Oh, has he found the handle? Look at his crew. They know that the checker will come out eventually. Here comes the white flag. One lap to go. This time around, race fans, it'll be the Iceman, Tim Ice, with the victory. Gold is second. Civil, third, Greg, and fourth. And a 75 of Barry Audi rounds out the top five. Hal Chassis Automobile. Here he is. He can hear a nice round of applause for Tim Ice. Finally capturing a win in Western Pennsylvania this season. Signals to his wife, she congratulates him, and he goes over to pick up the Eaton Park Trophy. Tries again on behalf of the staff of Mission of Motor Drone Speedway. We thank you for coming out to enjoy this makeup rain date event. This beautiful Sunday afternoon. Don't forget to drive carefully on your way home. We'll see you next Friday right here. Wolf Ed's Motor Oil presents four division Winston Racing Series action. Gates open at 5.30, racing at 8 p.m. Don't forget, September 5th, they'll start the flea market. And also, Jennerstown Speedway, they continue their program coming up on Saturday, and it will be their twin 35s for the late models at the Lower Highlands Ovals. So have a safe trip home. We'll turn it down to Joe Rolick to interview Tim. And remember, we'll see you at the races. Don't forget to watch Chase to the Checker. Tim Ice, Timmy, it's been a while, huh? All year. I tell you, we've uh, we've really been struggling, trying hard. Uh, we completely changed the front end of this car for this week, and we put stuff on it that shouldn't even begin to work, and it's sure come to life tonight. See, uh, the brakes here were smoking a little bit. You had that little boy here quite concerned about that. You want to explain that to him, maybe? Well, they just get so hot, and I think when you slow down, the air just blows through the hot rotors there, and they're just smoking a little bit. So everybody does that. Okay, Timmy, is this your first one of the season, you said? This is the first one in Pennsylvania for me, yes. How many do you have out in Ohio? I uh, just have one there, too. <laughs> so it's really been an off year for you, too. It seems like a lot of people are having an off year, but uh, glad to see you back in the winter circle. We'll see you next week. Good one, Timmy.